Hey, what's happening, guys? So, this past weekend, Blake and I were sitting around talking and messing with each other as fathers and sons will do. And we were playing hot hands. If you don't know what that is, look it up. But anyway, we had an argument over who has the best reaction time. He says since he is just 19 years old, he does. I tend to agree with him, but I'm not never going to admit that to him. So I told him I would whip up a game to test our reaction times this week while he was gone. And when he came home this weekend, we would play it and we would have scientific proof who has the faster reaction time. So this is what we got here. This is my reaction time game. We got our little uh, uh, traffic light thing to tell you. Don't press the button. Don't press the button. Press the button. We got the button. And we've got a uh, display and an Arduino. Let's plug it in, and I'll give you an idea of how this thing works. So when you turn it on, it says reaction time game, and then you get red, yellow, green. So when the light turns green, you can press the button, and it will tell you what your reaction time is between the time the light turned green and you press the button, in this case, is 5.292 seconds. To reset it, you're just going to reset the Arduino. This is a one-shot kind of deal. Here we go, red, yellow, green. 391 milliseconds. Not terrible. If you wonder why this is here, it's just to show me the rail is powered. It doesn't need to be there. So it's pretty simple. The switch, I'm using an, an internal pull-up, which we'll talk about. So one side of the switch goes to pin 2, the other side goes to ground. For this traffic light thing, if you don't have a traffic light, you can easily use three LEDs because they're just going to pins 8, 9, and 10. And then my uh, LCD has one of those little uh, I2C squared backpacks on it, you can see right there. So other than power, it only needs uh, two connections. And it works out pretty cool. Let's go over to the computer, and I'll show you how it works. All right, let's take a look at the code here. It's relatively simple, I think. We start off by calling this LCD I squared C library, so I can use the LCD without having to make 16 connections to the Arduino. Then we're going to call up that library here with this constructor LCD I underscore I, LC, I squared C. We're going to call it. LCD, and we're going to tell it it is at hex address 0x27, 16 columns, and two rows. Don't forget your ending semicolons, or the Arduino will yell at you. Okay, this section you don't need to do. I do it just to make things easier for me. When you use define, what it does is when the program compiles, the compiler takes this variable here and replaces it with whatever the value is that's following it. So when the program, whenever I say tax switch, I'm really saying two, and the same with these. So now we're going to do start times, our first very real variable, and it is going to be equal to millis, which is a millisecond clock that begins every time the Arduino restarts. So this is going to start from zero when the program starts. We're going to create two random variables, red ran for the red LED and yellow ran for the yellow LED. And they're going to have a minimum of a tenth of a second. And this one's going to have a maximum of two seconds. This will have a maximum of three seconds. So it could be anywhere from two tenths of a second to five seconds. That's a pretty good range. Now, most of the program goes on here in the setup. And I did this so that the LEDs only actuate once. It's just a one-shot program, basically. I always have serial, so I can troubleshoot what's happening, and I'll show you how that works. So we start by putting our LED pins as outputs. Nothing much going on there. Then we're going to say tax switch. Remember, that's pin 2 now. Pin mode, and it's going to be an input pull-up. So it is being held high. So as long as the button is not hooked up to it or pressed, Whenever you pull tax switch with a digital read, it should read a 1. 
Then we're going to make sure all the LEDs are off. We're going to start up the LCD. We're going to turn on its backlight. And we're going to print our little header here, which just says Reaction Tying Game by LE Learn Electronics. And we're going to wait a second. This is our first delay. And now you're going, ah. Uh, you have delays, but you started your timing up here. Yes, 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 I did. And we'll get to it. Then we're going to clear the LED. If you want, you can also turn the backlight off. So now we're going to turn on the red LED. This begins our countdown, and it will stay on for the length of red rand, which is from a tenth of a second to two seconds. Then it will be shut off. Following that, the yellow LED will turn on, and it will remain on for the length of yellow rand, and then it will shut off. Everything you just saw will only happen once. Now we get down to the loop. Um, this delay 100 here can possibly go. Not a big deal. All right. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the green LED. And that's going to trigger you, dear reader, viewer, to hit the button. Now it's saying if a digital read of pin 2 or you could put tax switch in there is equal to a 0, then a variable called stop time will be set to millis, which is the current timer. So it's probably at this point around like say 65,000, somewhere in there. Then we're gonna have another variable called my time. And here's where we deal with the delays. So my time is equal to our stop time minus our start time minus 1100, which is this delay here and this delay here. So see, we just remove the delays. And then re minus red rand minus yellow rand. And those are our two random numbers between two and three seconds. So we just remove any delays possible. Now we put our cursor in the upper left position. We say your time is. Then we drop down to the second line. We print your time and we say milliseconds. Now, while that's going on over here to the serial window, let me uh, bring that in here so you guys can see it. It'll print the thing. So I'm going to run the program right now. I know you're not going to be able to see it, but you will see the results here. Red, yellow, press. So our start time is zero. It's always going to be zero. Our stop time is 3947. We take out our delays and we end up with 417 or 291. Yeah, 291. I think we bounced there a little bit. Might have to do something about the bounce, but not going to worry too much about it right now. Let's try this again. Here we go. Red, yellow, click. 291. Okay. So there's my reaction time. Maybe you build one of these for yourself and see what your reaction time is. I've been practicing, you see. 192. Let's see if I can get any better. Hundred ninety-two. So that is uh, been a relatively consistent for me. Hundred ninety-two millisecond reaction time. Let's see what happens if we do it uh, family feud style. So I have to keep my hand down here on the table. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Red, yellow, green. Six hundred seventeen milliseconds. This is fun. This is easy. Something you can build in just a few minutes and have some fun with it. You know, show your friends, uh, show your family, whatever. It's just fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons and a big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.